Curl is a tool that I use all the time when I troubleshoot my backends. The verbose mode in particular provides detailed X-ray like information for the communication to the backend and helps identify where exactly things are broken. In this video, I want to explain how to read and understand curl in verbose mode. So if you're interested in this stuff, stay tuned. So guys, if you don't know, curl is a utility built by uh, Daniel Stamberg. He's a Swedish uh, developer, been doing this thing for 20 years. And uh, I, I encourage you to follow him on Twitter. He's He's really insightful when it comes to protocol building and we learn a lot from him. So curl is a tool that essentially supports multiple protocols. HTTP is one of them and it, it gives you a way to fetch information, fetch data from a server. So there is a mode in curl called verbose. You can either do dash dash verbose or just dash V. And when you go to a website like google.com and you hit enter, look what has happened. It gives you detailed analysis of exactly what happened from the DNS lockup going through the TLS handshake, going through uh, ALPN, uh, which protocol selected, the HTTP protocol, and the certificate verification, all that stuff. So I, I use this most of the time alongside with Telnet to identify exactly if my backend has some sort of trouble. To identify, for example, is it a DNS trouble? Is it is 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 my TLS handshake correct? Is my certificate good? Is is there something bad happening on the back end when it comes to the security aspect of things, or is it the actual server protocol itself? Is it, are we switching between HTTP two? versus HTTP one, or are we slowing down in the response itself? And obviously it can give you a certain amount of information. I like to call it like a first aid kit to identify what exactly is the problem. And then if I want to dive deep, obviously I have to go into my backend and debug that. How about we go through this and explain all this stuff. So the first step is, and it's not shown here, but google.com has been DNSed to find the IP address. Obviously, apparently there are two IP addresses that came back, the IPv6, which for some reason we cannot connect to, I don't, I'm not sure why. And there's the IPv4 itself, and we're connected to port 443. You might say, how did we figure out the port? The default port on HTTPS is 443. Okay, so the first thing the client did, which is curl in this case, it, it offered HTTP2 and HTTP1 as ALPN, which is the application layer protocol ne negotiation. That is a TLS extension that helps the server and the client agree on which application protocol to use. And I talked about it right here if you want to learn more detail about it. Okay, so that's the thing. Client says, hey, by the way, server, I'm supporting H2. I support HTTP1. What do you want? And then it prepares the local directories to write the certificates that the server will send essentially, right? So the first thing that the client does after that, after it obviously establish a, 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 a TCP connection, which is obviously not shown here as well, because that's, the, that's this line, the connected to. There is a SYN, SYNAC, and then ACK that tells me, hey, I have a TCP raw connection. The next step is actually sending the data, and that data happened to be the TLS handshake, which is to, to establish the communication in an encrypted manner. So the, the first thing that uh, curl does is we're gonna use TLS version 1.3. It's gonna be out, so the client is sending this out, right? Hoping that the server supports TLS 1.3. Obviously, it supports also 1.2, but it says like 1.3, I'm gonna recommend 1.3, but I support 1, 2, and above, right? And you can control all, all that stuff, by the way, in curl. You can say, hey, I only, I want to communicate in 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, and 1, 2 or above, or just, I want to communicate in 1.3 and above. If, if your server is only server uh, TLS 1.2, I don't want to communicate with it. You can't control all that stuff. You want to play with that stuff. So that's the client hello. That's where uh, I showed in that, in that short video where I, uh, we, we, uh, the client comes up with the value of G, value of N, uh, the value of X, and um, comes up with that expression, the, all that stuff, the Diffie-Hillman parameter, and then sends it. This stuff is unencrypted, obviously, because we don't have anything. So we send it over. The server, at this point, the server replies back 
with its own diffie hellman parameters by saying that hey this is how i'm going to communicate this is how i'm going to deal with you and by the way since the server looks like reply with 1.3 that means the server supports TS 1.3. And that also means that server already have the symmetric key. So technically the server can actually encrypt the communication. And that's what we see in the next message, right? This message says encrypted extensions. All the TLS extensions are now fully encrypted with the key. And you might say, Hussein, the server, the client doesn't have the key yet. That's fine. This part will help the client identify the key. Right, and then the server, the third message that the server sends. Obviously, guys, we call this all one message, right? But it's essentially multiple packets, right? So the server, third thing, very important thing, a proof that the server is who it claims it is, and this is the certificate. Very, very important, right? So the, we send me the certificate, and. Here's the thing, it's a very important thing. The certificate verification also called proof that the server actually owns the private key. So this is an encrypted message using the server's private key, which nobody has, right? That proves that the public key that is in the certificate actually can decrypt that message. And you, when you essentially take that public key and you decrypt that, message that here you find the message that is identical that is proof that someone only the the owner of the private key uh, could have done that okay if you don't send that then anyone literally in the middle can still don't touch the certificate right they can just go into the server hello and change it so they serve their own key parameters and they still serve it with the original server certificate, but they just change the server, the, the key parameters. In this case, you don't have proof that these have, haven't been tampered with, right? That's, that's, that's why you need the certificate, essentially, and the certificate verification. And finally, a message that says finished. And then by this, the client already has this key. It says, okay, I'm changing. Let's go on and then we finish the communication. And then this is a message from uh, Carol that says, hey, I finished the communication. I'm using TLS 1.3 for that. And here is the Cypher suite that I used. Obviously, uh, Cypher suite for TLS 1.3 are, are different from uh, TLS 1.2. Uh, the first part of TLS 1.3 is just like, what is the protocol TLS? It's gonna, always going to be TLS. Yes, this, the, this whole thing is the Cypher algorithm that have been used, which is AES, 256-bit, uh, Gauss, I forgot his name, what's good? Gauss counter mode, Gal, Gal counter mode, counter mode, that's the approach of their encrypting. I'm going to reference Dr. Mike, uh, Professor Mike video on how uh, Gau uh, Gauss counter mode versus uh, versus CBC versus ECB, all that stuff. And this is the final thing, which is the message uh, authenticated authentication code algorithm. So this is the hash of the whole encrypted message, right? Which algorithm should I use to encrypt the whole thing that I send back, right? And 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 this is a little bit different than this, guys, right? This has been agreed upon and uh, the code doesn't show us this, but you can see it from uh, Chrome and other services, but it's like, what what hash algorithm actually has been used to, to do the hash that we talked about in, in the pri to prove that it's the private key is owned by the server, right? So the final part is the SHA-384, which tells the, what is, what is, which, is uh, which is called the message authentication code. That's the algorithm to encrypt the whole message. Essentially, this protects the integrity of the encrypted message. From now on, once we have the keys, we're gonna encrypt everything, right, guys? You might say, if it's encrypted, why do why do you need to protect the encrypted message? <laughs> well, this actually, this is very important because some attackers can actually flip certain bits that are encrypted and they will accidentally be decrypted to mean completely something else. People have done that, and it's very, very dangerous, right? So the attacker might not see the content of the message, but seeing the, the encrypted message 
they can flip certain bits and they change it. This protects the integrity of the message by preventing people from doing that stuff. ELPN server accepted to use H2. That says, hey, okay, we communicated and the server decided to accept our H2. This is, this is a response from this, right? If we serve this and this, sometimes you'll see the server decided to, uh, to accept HTTP 1.1. So this is done during the TLS handshake. Uh, which is ALPM. You might say, Hussein, why is not why is HTTP3 is not is on is not one of them? Curls about HTTP3. That's correct. ALPM is a little bit difficult to do with HTTP3 just because HTTP3 uses a UDP, and by this time we already established a TCP connection, right? So we can't really do it using a ALPM. We have to do it earlier. Uh, some approach do it asynchronously, like they establish multiple connections at the same time to to, to the service that supports HTTP3, a UDP connection, a quick connection to be specific, and another, um, some other services uh, do DNS uh, alternative service record in the DNS, which says, hey, by the way, while you're doing a DNS query during this stage to find the IP address, here, this thing that you're about to communicate to actually supports HTTP3. So just go ahead and connect to as a quick connection obviously you still have to do both tcp and a quick connection clients always do two now with http 3 just because udp sometimes are blocked in certain um, places so they always to to make the user experience better they they make it uh, they they establish it this way so yeah carl you can see like a lot of useful information this is the actual certificate that we sent back google sent us right all that stuff Again, we're saying that, hey, we're using HTTP2. We changed the connection to, and this is, uh, we're using a stream one. And I talked about HTTP2, guys. If you're saying, if you see me like talking about streams, streams are, are, are channels that are in the HTTP2 connection. I talked about HTTP2. Uh, check out the video right here. But odd number streams are client streams, and even number streams are server streams that things that comes from the server to the client okay so that's why it's like now number one is going to be used here and that's the handle and this is the actual content it's going to obviously use a, a header it sends the headers it sends all that stuff uh, this is because i established a connection before it's going to say hey this is a new ticket go ahead and and and, and it's going to remove my old session id because i connected to google prior with the curl uh max concurrent stream very 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 critical guys with this is very very critical to understand this is only relevant to http2 and that tells the client how many and the server both of actually how many streams can you connect uh, through this http connection http2 connection you can do many many streams but by default there is there is a limit and knowing this limit is very critical in your backend to derive the the front end experience because so the server and the client agrees on the maximum concurrent streams the http2 streams that they can communicate to and this is 100 essentially right so you cannot create more than 100 streams so if you're seeing some bottleneck and stalling on the client side that means maybe you have reached that limit doesn't doesn't always mean that increasing this is a good idea because it comes with a cost uh increasing the maximum concurrent streams right some people increase it to 500 uh it's it's, it's it's essentially it's it, it's all to me it's like it's better to op open another tcp connection than dealing with the fat tcp uh streams a set of streams because why because you http2 has to do a lot of cpu computation right and memory uh, handling to separate these streams from the TCP packets that it arrives, right? So there's a lot of work that goes there. And the more streams you have, the more work uh, CPU is doing. So be careful with this number. Just just be aware of it. And this that's why it's very important here. Obviously, this still this now that now we're in the content land. This is the headers, 301, which means uh, I believe redirect. 
because we're going to google.com this is now redirecting me to https www.google.com says hey i got I sent you text back uh here's some cash uh, this we know this stuff the server is google web services uh, content length 220 uh, access and protection all that jazz here's the alternative servers that i talked about it says this is this is very useful right the alternative service is a header and it's also a dns entry and using that next time that curl or other clients can use this information to connect to the HTTP3 server on this port on this address essentially so it says hey by the way you can connect to the same host on port 443 right with a quick connection and i'll accept it definitely so feel free to do that so look at that uh 29 is basically the draft version of the uh, HTTP3 and that says guys this is just a very simple thing and i can take <laughs> another 20 minutes going through a TLS 1.2, maybe in another video, a T and an expired certificate, how it will look like, and, and all that stuff, right? All right, guys, uh, sorry for the long video. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to see you on the next one. You guys are awesome. Goodbye.